welcome to the Weekends with Whispered. I'm Courtney Lee Smith. I'm Fulton Smith. And we're here on this weekend, just like there's strategies into the game of chess that you have to learn, there are some strategies along the grief journey that you need to know. Need to know, because it'll help you have a smoother journey to that place of peace. Not that your grief will go away, but it's a smoother journey to find that place of peace. And sometimes it's a daily peace that you have to find. So this weekend, what are those words to help you get through the next days to next weekend? Today's talk, we're going to talk about who or what are you pulling towards yourself along your grief journey. Basically, the laws of attraction. Feelings leads to foolishness. Yeah. Your feelings, acting in your feelings lead to foolishness. Your thoughts lead to action. So make sure where your thoughts and your feelings are, that is what you're pulling in in the direction that you want to go. So babe, what is it that attracted you to me? Tell everybody so they'll understand what our laws or attraction are. Laughter and smiles. <laughs> okay. Contagious. Something that covers and comforts you through it all. You're saying my laugh and my smile covers and comforts yes. us through it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I this lady has a smile and laugh that is, expresses a multitude of emotion that pulls me closer Continue. to me. Ah, it's pretty good. It's like a magnet. You know, when you laugh, when you smile, it, it kind of pulls the negativity out of other people so it goes away. So you're pulling in other people. Now, don't get me wrong. I do cry. I let my tears drop. I let my feelings. I mean, because otherwise, if you don't do that, it's a big old emotion that's a bottle up inside. But the thing is, is to put an expiration date on them. You have to know that you cannot cry all of the time. Yes, then next week. We'll be discussing the need to cry. Yeah, it's a real need to cry. So y'all y'all come back, and I know we hadn't even got into the message today. We already setting you up for next weekend, the need to cry. But the thing is, we talked about strategies. One of the best strategies for life are in the Bible. So we're going to um, jump actually to in the Bible about a, a great strategy that we're going to talk about when you're talking about loss and losing something. What two things that I want you to remember when you're looking for something and attracting things. Are you attracting something that helps you or hinders you? So that means is it pushing you forward or does it have you stuck? And so when it makes me think about something versus pushing you forward or getting stuck, it actually guided me to um, Genesis 19:26, And it talks about Lot's wife. She was stuck. It's not that she just looked back. I don't have nothing against going down memory lane. Memory lane is, is cool. I know you're going to say you're not having a memory, but memory lane is cool. But the only thing about memory lane, you don't want to get stuck talking about the good old days all the time, how it was, and never understand that your future can be good and your future has something to offer. And I know that's hard to see right now in that minute, in that moment. But the thing is, don't get frozen in the past. Don't get turned into a pillar of salt because you are so consumed by the loss. And it's not just the loss of your spouse you become so consumed. Sometimes it's the loss of the income of that person. Some yes. time you've lost your house. Yes. Of course, you've lost your companion. You've lost familiarity, and you've lost love. So those that's a lot of things that you lost. But the thing is, you can't get so frozen in that place that you're frozen in the past. And as it says, it becomes a statue, becomes a pillar. So know the difference between the memories that help you and the memories that hinder you. And then secondly, oh my goodness, are we attention getters? Or are we truly asking for assistance from people? You know, do we cry wolf? Do we always cry woe is me because we want to be the victim in a situation? Yes, loss is great, but are you doing it because you're playing a victim when you're calling people because you want, you're want you manipulating people in your loss? And when you're manipulating people in your loss, you're attracting other manipulators. So be careful. When you cry wolf, all you're doing is attracting the wolf. You get wolves. You get wolves that come and eat and manipulate you. And so this is what happened further in that story of uh, Lot. In chapter 1930, he was in a place of fear. And that's what happens when you cry wolf too many times. You're afraid that there's nobody to help. You're afraid that there's danger. So the thing is, he went out and hid in the mountains. But then even continuing on that, what he attracted, he placed that fear and that lack of hope into his daughters to the point that he allowed them to rob him of his seed, which means it was, uh, 
a relationship where his daughters end up having a relationship with him in order to birth kids. So the thing is, what are you birthing in life when you attract other people? Because then you multiply because you allow them to steal your seeds, your destiny. So be careful when you cry wolf because you let the wolf come in and steal from you. So don't allow fear or frighten behavior to pass on to your kids and everybody else that in there because that can be dangerous on this journey of grief that you cause other people to be afraid as well. Let's talk about blocks. No. Grift. Grift with them blocks. No. Keep you safe. Away from the person to pass. Yeah, see, blocks are those people who hinder you. Yeah, because they, they, they're they builders now, but they're a different kind of builder. They build stuff to keep you in, keep you in prison when you get stuck in that past place. And that's what we don't want to do. So the real people we want are... Wow, builders. Wow, yeah. Wow, what, 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 that's, how, that's, that's a good word. You want builders because well, cause builders, what they do, they take you to the next level. They build you up, they help you get across. They get you out of the unknown. They move you from the uncomfortable. And I know sometimes builders, we don't really want them to be around because we like to be stuck where we are. Sometimes builders be something like tornadoes now. Yeah, because they can come in and they got to do a little destruction <laughs> first, mm -hmm. do a little gutting before they can start <laughs> building. But the thing is, th those are the people that you need in your life who going to shake things up, who going to do a little destruction in there. So now you just got to think about which type of people do you attract? Are you typing blocks and builders? Because they look a little the same. They both bring tools with them. Yes. They both bring some kind of blocks or foundation. But the key is, are they building a prison? Or are they building something to help you get to the next place? Man. And that's, that's, they, let's, how do you, how do you figure that part out? Because when you get in that, that emotional state, then you, 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 you bump it. And it's kind of hard to discover between the builders of the blockers. Well, the thing is, take a look at their life. Just like the words say, look at the fruit. Okay, if they're builders, that means in their life you can see where they're transitioning to the next level. You can see how they deal with change. You can see how they deal with difficulty. And the thing is, if if you're attracting people who are just like you in your particular momentary situation, that means you're going to attract blocks because you're going to attract people who are very emotional, who are very charged up. And so the thing is, you have to not act in those emotions because there are going to be a lot of feelings that you go through, but you got to understand that you cannot react in your feelings. You cannot not react in just momentary thoughts because we have those along the grief journey. There, there is some ups, there's some downs, but the thing is you have to put a strategy in place to say, okay, I'm going to only allow people into my life when I am experiencing this, the positive that I want to attract. One question I want to ask you. When you're in that state of mourning, is, is tell the, the people how to respond because you know you can say what you're going to do okay but when you're something to you directly in your face and in, in your in your eyes is just covered i mean your eyes your mind and ears is just locked down let's say that word just blocked off from everything how you how you come out of that because it's easy said and done because well you're a magnet remember a magnet can hold on to something or a magnet can shake something off as well so the thing is just because you pull something in doesn't mean you can't shake it off and get rid of it. That means you have to let go of that behavior, that attitude, that thought, that emotion that it's holding on to. So, hey, I might have been crying and I end up pulling some wrong things into me at that moment. But I, I get out of that cry mode. I get out of that depression. And what it does, it opens up my circle and takes away the things that were attracted to that particular emotion at that particular time. And that's the, that's the key. Not holding and staying because as long as you stay in that circle with that negativity, you're going to keep in that cycle. That's why you got to have a place where you can demagnetize yourself is would be the key word. So if you find yourself in that position where you feel like you're just attracting and your circle has gotten dark and it's gotten negative, one thing you need to track is what is your memory focused on. Like I said, I don't tell you not to go down memory lane. Memory lane is a place that we all have to go down. But the key is, are you using your memories to build or are you using your memories to hold you back? And actually, on Monday memory, 
hashtag Monday Memories and you can find out a lot of different things that we say about Monday Memories on our on Facebook page at the Relationship Service Station. So you can visit us there during the week on Monday to get more. So go down Monday Me Memory Lane with us, Monday Memory Lane. But we definitely want to have you back next weekend to talk about why you need to cry. But remember, always join us, contact us, because we are here to help you set up a strategy to navigate along your grief, grief journey so you can make a choice to live. That's the L-I-V-E, a choice to live. Thank you for joining us here on another weekend with Noah's Word.